Hey guys, how you doing? We're continuing to work with using basic Wing Chun techniques for self-defense. And what we started off so far was looking at the risk of a sucker punch. Somebody's in your face like this, and we just want to create and maintain our personal boundaries like this. We can go back and then if they come into us, then we can go in and bring them down, and just keep hitting them, etc. Uh, and then we looked at a situation where there's no ambiguity as to whether the fight is on. The fight is on, but our opponent is outside of our personal space. If they're outside of our personal space, to a certain extent within reason, we're just going to ignore them. We're not going to chase them too much because it can leave ourselves open. However, the trigger for us to attack them is when they come into our personal space. Then, then we can start attacking them. So what we're going to work on today is, is that what Michal is going to do is, Michal maybe say he's going to faint. He's going to pretend to come in to draw me forwards and then he can jump back and hit me with a counter punch or a counter kick. So for example, if Michal faints, I come back and now Michal can hit me with a counter punch or a counter kick. And this is the risk that we have to address. However, what we're going to do is this. And what we just did was, is that as I went forwards, as my lead leg was going forwards and there was nothing there, when my lead leg touched off the ground, my lead leg then became my supporting leg and I brought my rear leg through now as my front leg. And it just meant I was able to go forwards more swiftly and double the distance that I travel. And that's if somebody say jumps back. We're also gonna look at a situation where maybe our opponent <clears throat> is not fainting they're, but they're on the periphery of our personal space and they're bobbing around dancing like this. The worst thing that we can do is just wait there to eventually get picked off. As soon as somebody's on the periphery of our personal space and they're weaving or dancing, we just go forwards and just chase them and strike them. And we might ask how many Wing Chun steps does it take to get to our opponent? It takes one Wing Chun step to get to our opponent. The rest of the time we just go forwards. And the Wing Chun footwork only comes in as we reach our opponent. So what we've done so far guys is we have assumed there's a, there is a clear path between our fists and our opponent's face. What we're going to look on now in subsequent videos is what we do maybe if there's an obstacle and we can't get through, how may we, for example, remove the obstacle in order to do the punch or we're also going to look at the risk if our opponent actually does a punch himself. What can we do to mitigate against it? That's for subsequent video guys. Thanks guys, thanks for your help.